Brewster here, new episode of Scales and Tails. This is chord form soloing, and the idea or concept behind this lesson actually came from a lesson I've used with private lesson students for decades, and I've had a lot of students that really, you know, had some progress or opened some doors with this idea. And it's been around for a long, long time. There's lots of great guitarists, you know, legends, that have kind of used this approach. And there's another approach known as chord tone soloing, and it's definitely similar to the chord form soloing, so I don't want to confuse anybody out there because we're definitely playing, you know, chord tones, but we're literally, you know, locking in to a, a chord shape or a form or a fingering, you know, on the fretboard. And we're using that kind of as a guide or a base of operations. And once we get going here, you're going to see lots of examples of this, you know, in popular music. But here's an image with some pioneers of chord form soloing. Now, as far as the image I just flashed with the legends of chord form soloing, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of other players I could have included. And then as far as the music in this episode, I could have chose, you know, hundreds, if not thousands, of other songs or albums or bands that include this concept. But then here's an image with some of the album covers, you know, featuring the music that's in this episode. So to get the ball rolling here, the basic premise behind this concept, chord form soloing, is we're taking the caged, you know, chords uh, from the caged, you know, system, and we're literally grabbing those shapes and then finding melodic, you know, solo or lead guitar ideas using those shapes and forms. So, you know, caged, we're literally grabbing, you know, C, A, G, E, and D. And here's an image, you know, showing you the caged, you know, arrangement of chords. So if you use the cage system of chords as a fingering layout or a guide to these, you know, chord forms, you're going to find certain shapes are very popular and common. Other shapes don't really appear as much or they're not really that user friendly. But you're going to find a lot of D action and A action in this lesson. And not to neglect, you know, G or E or C, but, uh, you know, like the G shape when you move it up and kind of relocate it, it's kind of strange, you know, like higher on the fretboard, you know, using that for solos and stuff. The E form, for sure, you can definitely find lots of blues guitarists, you know, kind of using that little partial, you know, shape of that E major chord for soloing. Like that. But we're going to be hitting a lot of D and A. And also C major, when you move it up, you know, and kind of fret behind it, like if we move C major here to D, you can actually see, you know, that overlap of that D form right there. So there's the D form of, you know, the D of caged. And then if you take the, the C, which is the C of caged, and move that up to D, you can see it shares that same shape right there. So we're going to be kind of using, you know, bits and pieces of D and or C in this lesson. But uh, just keep that in mind as you move along and start practicing this, or maybe noticing solos and licks and stuff from other players. You can actually use this with any chord, but we're just going to kind of stick with these basic chords. With the opening, that's all the young dudes from Mata Hoople. That's Mick Ronson on guitar, also co-written by David Bowie. And if you analyze Mick's, you know, opening guitar solo or that intro solo, you'll actually see chord form soloing in action. But to really understand it or unlock it, you have to analyze the chords, you know, being played behind that solo. And the chord progression there, it's D, and then D over C sharp, and then B minor 7. B minor 7 over A, and then F sharp minor, to A major. And I'm also hearing uh, A sus 4 just for a second there at the end of that progression, but it's D, D over C sharp, B minor 7, B minor 7 over A, F sharp minor, to A major. And then if you analyze Mick's solo, you can actually see he opens with a D major arpeggio right here. Just think of that open position, you know, cowboy D, but move it way up here, and you can see there's where he opens his lead. So that F sharp D to A, back to F sharp, grab this E, and then bend that to F sharp, and you're going to exaggerate that bend. And then C sharp to D right here. And right there, that's actually B minor, a little B minor triad hiding right there. So just right there in the opening of that lead, he's already moved from a D triad here, or chord form, to a B minor form right here. But he's doing it melodically, you know, with a guitar solo. Right there, grab the C sharp bend to D. And you got the 
this really crafty chromatic lick right here. Let's slide, you know, B into C sharp and pull off that C natural and then B to B flat to A. Right there, that's that last bend's actually really crafty because it ends on A, right? And he's bending that D up to E, which is matching you know that A major chord. So that's actually a really good lesson in chord form soloing because he's literally walking you know along with that chord progression, but he's doing it with these partial chords and melodic moves and bends you know, as a guitar solo. So the next step here, we're going to move all this information away from open position because we're not going to be using this, you know, as chords or part of a chord progression or rhythm guitar. We're actually converting these fingerings and ideas into licks and solos and melodic information. So let's get away from this. And let's just move it up an octave, kind of where Mick Ronson, you know, had it for his All the Young Dudes intro solo. So there's D major way up here. You know, the same idea. But now we're thinking more kind of single notes, you know, melodies. We could also reach up here and grab this higher A there on the 17th fret on the high E string. Right? And then right there we could also convert that just as easily. And there's D major converted to D minor. We could do the same thing way up here. There's D major. Take that F sharp and change it to F natural right there. And there's D minor. up there and grab that A again. Right. And then think of other things that you do with these chords. You know, think of D major and maybe those sus chords too, like sus4, you know, add that G, or the sus2 and, and add that E. Right? You know, very, very common. But we can mimic that same thing up here, because there's a G right there on the 15th fret on the high E. And it's kind of flirting with sus4. We could also play with that sus2, that E note. And we could grab it here. We could also grab that E note right there on the 17th fret on the B. starting to do it, you know, with single notes and licks. And just kind of play around with those different shapes. So to move back into song territory, think of a song like Jessica by the Allman Brothers, and definitely Dickie Betts is a chord form soloing master, and the melody from Jessica reveals some more of this chord-based, you know, melodic playing, like this. Right there we're using this D form in the key of A because there's E, A, and C sharp so that's definitely A major but we're doing it like that. Right? And you can definitely hear A major and he's also playing with A sus4 he's grabbing that D because he's doing that. And then you reach up and grab that E back to that D which is the sus4 and then come back down that A major Uh, D to C sharp, that D to C sharp, D up to E, and then grab A, and then that's the second time when you grab that A note. But that's a you know a timeless uh, melodic guitar statement, and once again, it's using that very basic and very recognizable you know D form right there in the key of A. So if we flip A major to A minor, we can actually visit something like Savannah Woman from Tommy Boland. This is on the teaser album, and this actually appeared in the recent uh, Tommy Boland chord play episode. But I wanted to revisit this because now we're actually using A minor instead of A major like we had, you know, in Jessica. So the intro to Savannah Woman is like this. <laughs> there 
we're literally grabbing you know, A minor, but it's right here. So think of that, you know, A major form we had here. But then for Savannah Woman, he's doing so right there, that E to A uh, to that C. And right there, he's grabbing D. He's also grabbing E flat, which is the flat five right there. So we're kind of dipping into the blue scale now. But you can definitely see in the A minor triad right there. That's really crafty. You know, the way that A minor you know, triad kind of pops in right there. So without question, a chord form soloing master is David Gilmour from Pink Floyd, and I'm a huge Floyd fan. And there's tons of examples of him using, you know, chord fingerings and shapes melodically during solos and licks. But then uh, the first solo, Uncomfortably Numb, you know, from the wall, you know, a timeless classic solo. But you can actually see Gilmour using two shapes, you know, for this opening phrase, like this. <laughs> into that F sharp of a D major chord right there. But he's doing it like that. We're just kind of rake into it. And then you're bending that up to G. Then you're going to grab this D and bend that up to E. Back to D. And then C sharp to A to E. And then end on the note D. Phrase, you can literally see there's you know D major being played with and also A major and he's kind of returning to D you know which is really interesting to see that what about the mighty Eddie Van Halen with the solo from Running with the Devil and you can definitely see Eddie using these A shapes or forms you know during that solo this is technically supposed to be tuned down a half step but I'm still just in standard tuning but I did kick on the phase 90, but like this. So right there, we're literally grabbing A. And you're kind of rolling your finger there too, because you don't want that to all ring together. Like a chord, you want it to be separate, you know, like an arpeggio. And G right here. Start that A again. And then grab that A to B. Of course, it keeps going right there, but that's literally, you know, using chord forms you know, for that guitar solo, which is eye opening and really cool. Last but not least is the timeless guitar solo from Brian Adams' Run to You. And this is Keith Scott on guitar. And this actually came up in the Brian Adams chord play episode. I also did a Keith Scott 3 for all too, where we looked at some of his licks. Great player. And this is probably one of the easiest guitar solos ever. But there's actually a harmony part that comes in that's also using chords, so it's really cool. But the solo from Run To You, it literally just maps out this F sharp to E to D to E progression. And that's basically like the chord progression behind the lead, even though there's not a guitar playing those chords. It's really just doing this. just barred. Right? Really simple. But I'm actually using individual fingers there and separating those notes because it's not really ringing like that. You hear it like individual notes like that. And you can't really get that sound with just one finger. You definitely don't want to hop like that. Hops. You actually want to separate and use three fingers, you know, for those three notes that are lined up right there. And on that F, uh, F sharp, you know, it's F sharp major, but you're also playing with the sus4, that B note. And then you're spelling that out with E. The same thing with E. You know, you're grabbing that A note. So it's like E sus4, but you're doing it like that. 
blank, and then D major right here, and then you're grabbing D sus4 with that G note. But doing it like this. Go back to that E again. You can literally see how that's kind of walking through that progression. part right there is actually really crafty because we're still doing F sharp, E, and D, but you know we're basically extending it to a different chord or chord form because we have this, and F sharp, and then the harmony part which this actually you know there's one cycle through the solo before the harmony comes in and it's kind of crafty you know like in the mix you can hear it but you really have to check it out and, and listen for it but then the harmony part for that F actually extending over here right? and that's F sharp and part of that you know, C form and then move that down a whole step there's E and then move down another whole step there's D go back up a whole step there's E again Put those two parts together, it's magic. episode of Scales and Tails with chord form soloing and like I mentioned earlier I could have mentioned you know dozens if not hundreds of other guitarists and hundreds if not thousands of other songs or albums and moments where this type of playing you know makes an appearance because it's very very common and you can hear it in rock and blues and jazz and country and funk and a bunch of different styles of music so it's definitely very common and frequently you know used and it's really just an additional strategy you know for soloing because you don't want to give up scales and stuff you're just basically arriving at some different ideas and licks and phrases, you know, using these chord forms, which you may not, you know, like actually see or reveal those, you know, using the scale. It may not be until you actually sit there and start playing around with some of these chord shapes and fingerings, and these ideas pop out, like maybe a lick or part of a melody or a phrase. And literally, you can take any chord. You could take the Hendrix chord, you know, E7 sharp 9, you can convert that melodically. You could take some big crazy, you know, prog rock or stretched out, you know, jazz chord or something and convert that melodically, you know, but I just basically wanted to introduce this idea just to help you know, anybody out there that's maybe kind of fumbling with this or they've noticed it, you know, in a, in a solo or a song somewhere. And it's exciting. It's very basic, but definitely the results that it reveals and kind of produces are very inspiring and interesting. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.